Hello, my name is Anne Zeller, and I teach primate behavior at the University of Waterloo. I've been studying primates in the wild and in captivity for over 25 years. This is a video about New World monkeys, covering 12 genera, although the material on some forms might necessarily be quite brief. Some of this video footage was shot in the rainforest of eastern Costa Rica, and other footage came from several research parks and zoos, including Monkey Jungle in Florida, Basel Zoo in Zurich, and Appenhull in the Netherlands. In the wild, New World monkeys are found from Mexico, south through Central and South America, to northern Argentina in a wide variety of habitats. New fossil finds and DNA research have radically altered how classification is done in New World monkeys. Herskovitz, who wrote extensively on New World monkeys in the 1970s, reinforced the earlier idea of the division between the smaller marmosets and tamarins being grouped in the family Calatricidae and all the other New World monkeys being grouped in the family Cebidae. These two families were then grouped together in the superfamily, Seboidea. The newer idea is that the monkeys of the New World are now based in five families in the superfamily Seboidea, based on genetic and evolutionary evidence. These will include the Cebidae, including the capuchin and squirrel monkey, the Aotidae, or night monkey, also called the owl monkeys, the Calatricidae, who include both the marmosets and the tamarins, the Atelidae, including the spider monkey and the howler, and the Pathisidae, including the Saki and the Titi monkeys. Many of these animals are so small and quick that it is difficult to videotape them clearly in the wild. This program is intended to cover basic behaviors such as locomotion, eating, communication, including scent marking, infant care, and adult social relations. These are wild white-throated capuchins, Cebus capucina, in the rainforests of Costa Rica. The group of about 15 animals moves along the branches of the trees, jumping from tree to tree and across narrow rivers. Even mothers carrying infants on their backs make long leaps, as this one was doing. Capuchins are active foragers, looking in and under leaves, as well as unrolling them in hopes of finding insects. These monkeys live in multi-male, multi-female groups in Central America and south into Ecuador. Each group has a home range of about 60 to 150 acres. They use a variety of communicative patterns, including vocalizations, direct stares, branch shaking, and open mouth stress. The diet consists of fruit, leaves, nuts, flowers, insects, and small invertebrates. Some of the hard-shelled nuts are banged on tree trunks or branches to crack them, as is occurring in this case. This type of behavior and other types of object manipulation, like poking sticks into tree holes to retrieve food, is not seen in other species of New World monkeys. They move rapidly in the middle story of the forest, climbing branches, small tree trunks, and vines. Because of the many predators and wet forest floor, they seldom move down to the ground in the wild. These tufted or brown capuchins, Cebus apella, live in a five-acre enclosure at Monkey Jungle in South Florida. You can clearly see the New World trait of widely separated platyrene nostrils, which differ from the closely spaced nostrils of the Old World forms. The tufts of dark hair on their heads is why these are called tufted capuchins. New World monkeys also differ from Old World ones in having grasping or prehensile tails, which grip tree trunks and branches. The capuchin's tails are semi-prehensile because they do not have a strip of dermal skin on the undersides. Capuchins do forage lower in the canopy, and especially the males will come down to the forest floor to search for food, but quickly carry food back to the trees. You can see that the mother's tail does not have a skin patch on the underside. Infants are born at about two-year intervals after a five-month gestation and are carried by their mothers for the first six to eight months. 
the youngster learns to locomote, forage and self-groom, as well as to interact with others. Capuchins are active, lively animals who use their tails to help support their weight while foraging at the ends of branches, at least as much as they use them during locomotion. Because they do not have a skin-covered patch on the underside, these tails are classed as semi-prehensile. Once they have food in hand, they may rub it between their palms to clean it, or hammer hard objects such as nuts open on a tree branch. In the trees or on the ground, they forage for nuts, fruit, leaves, insects, and occasional invertebrates. They turn over leaf litter to dislodge insects, grabbing them with their hands if they can. But they are not always successful. Another difference between old and new world monkeys is the number of teeth, because new world monkeys have three premolars, while old world monkeys, apes and humans have only two. They often forage in close proximity to each other and are very agile, able to carry food bipedally even when an infant is clinging to their backs. In addition to fruit and leaves, they will often tear off young stems in order to strip off the bark and eat the cambium layer underneath, as well as the pith. Their strong incisor teeth and jaw muscles are particularly well adapted to this task. Because they weigh about three to five kilograms, they can eat less concentrated food, such as bark cambium and leaves, that a smaller animal will not be able to process. A major aspect of social communication in capuchins is a form of scent marking called urine washing, in which a monkey urinates on its hands and feet and rubs the liquid with its scent into its own body, or the substrate. This way they spread their scent on themselves, their conspecifics, and their territory. Urine washing is one reason why New World monkeys do not make good household pets. In addition to urine washing, they also self-scratch which can indicate nervousness or anxiety. Facial gestures are an important form of communication in all primates. And as in the wild, members of this genus use threats, including direct stares, eyebrow raises, and open mouths, as well as vocalization. Yawns exposing the animal's formidable canine teeth are also a threat. Squirrel monkeys sleep clumped together in a tree fork for warmth because they are so small, and they climb to the top of the canopy to sun, bathe, and warm up at the beginning of the day. They move to all levels of the forest over the course of the day in a loose aggregation of 20 to 150 animals, jumping from branch to branch, seeking insects and fruit. Their tails are some help in holding on, but not as prehensile as in other monkeys. Because they are very small, weighing about 800 grams, they need concentrated sources of nutrients like insects, which form 80% of their diet, and some fruit, rather than eating leaves and bark. They jump very agilely from tree to tree, one often following the other. These are Roman arched Bolivian squirrel monkeys, Cimeri boliviensis, with rounded white patches over their eyes. In the wild, they live in Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, and Venezuela. Because these ones live at monkey jungle, they can safely forage on the ground, although they bring food back to the trees. Females and juveniles often forage together, eating leaf buds and tree gum, as well as insects. Species differences between various types of squirrel monkeys are marked by differences in the shape of the white patches over their eyes and the color of their heads and extremities. These Bolivian forms have orange sides and extremities with a gray head cap in males and a black one in females, although each hair is actually banded with different colors to increase the effectiveness of camouflage so they are more difficult for predators to see. Infants tend to be born in a birth season with a gestation period of five months. By six to eight months, they are able to forage and locomote on their own, but are not adult size until about two and a half years. 
They learn to find food and process it for eating, which can be done by rubbing it on a tree branch or root. Sometimes they seize food and carry it away from the others in order to eat in peace. The juveniles can compete strongly over food, breaking into tussles and quickly learning to defend themselves. One feature of squirrel monkeys is their ability to stiffen their tail to use like a tripod when sitting, as this one does while eating. Foraging among leaves often results in finding insects or caterpillars, which they can carry up into the trees to eat. During the mating season, which is the dry season, the females begin to cycle sexually. This triggers the males to begin spermatogenesis.